All right. Well, it's a beautiful day in uh, the neighborhood. What on earth is going on over there? Huh. Okay. Ooh. Oh, okay. It's a, yeah, it's a, something up against the barn there, that white thing. There's Rocky. He's having his outside water. He's using the snow shovel as a tail rest. He is. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, yeah. Oh my goodness, Rocky, you're funny. You're very funny. <laughs> He's so funny. Anyway, I'm going to go for a walk around the field here. And i got to tell you a story. Yesterday, I went to the junkyard. And I was, uh, I had a conversation actually with uh, a lady who I've known for a long time. I've known her since we were both in our 20s. She's about seven years younger than I am. She'd have been in her early 20s and I was in my late 20s when I met her. Um, she's the daughter, actually, of the owners of the junkyard, and uh, her, um, she does the, the bookkeeping and the clerical work, all that stuff there. Anyway, we were having a conversation, and we're of a like mind when it comes to these uh, shots that have been pushed and the whole thing with the that's been happening in the world, the way the world is being ran and so on. That's really pretty there, eh? Nice, nice. Anyway, um, so we have some good conversations sometimes when we get together. Anyway, we're having a conversation, and she was talking about how she knows of so many people that are still taking those shots, even though it's been proven at this point. It's really been proven that they're not a good thing, you know? And uh, I told her, I said, well, um, uh, people, you know, often will do things that they know are bad for them in order to fit in, you know, or they'll follow the crowd or whatever because they want to fit in. And um, I said, look at teenagers. Teenagers will drink excessively and smoke and use dope and do other risky things, other things that could really harm them, in order to fit in. Oh, that's a black-eyed Susan. Anyway, um, so I said, it, 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 I said, you know, it's just the way people are. It's human nature. Um, They'll do whatever whatever the crowd is doing, you know. Anyway, um, you know, they'll do something, you know, basically I'll do it because the others are doing it. And those others are doing it because others are doing it and so on. Anyway, she said, well, yes, but those are teenagers. And, you know, uh, adults should know better. And I said, well, you're right about that. I said... And, and, and the truth is, adults do know better. However, there aren't very many adults, really. I mean, there are a lot of people who are chronologically adults, yes. But there aren't many people who are really adults. Because I said, to be an adult means to have critical thinking ability. It means uh, to have courage, not to just follow the crowd so as to fit in and so as not to be laughed at or are abused in any way, bullied or persecuted or whatever. I said, uh, you know, <coughs> there's a lot more to being an adult than, than just having lived a certain number of years. And unfortunately, there are many people who really are still of that high school teenage juvenile mentality. And I said, those are the ones that you encounter on Facebook. 
who will still laugh at you and tell you you're a horrible person because you didn't get the thing, you know? And there's generally a crowd of them saying similar things and they just join in, you know, they jump on the bandwagon. Anyway, I said, uh, uh, basically it's like this. Um, uh, very few people are adults in the true sense of the word. Anyway, as I said that, a man walked in and he was one of these smart Alex, you know. And he didn't say that, he started to ridicule me. Which, in, in a way, take that man take, playing the part of the high school bully, grown man, kind of proved my point anyway. So I want to say thank you to that man if he sees this. Because whether you know it or not, sir, you proved me right. Um, for your behavior, how you inserted yourself into that conversation. And how you... Uh, how you made a point of attempting to hold me up to ridicule and so on. So, anyway, I appreciate that because you actually made my point for me. You made me look kind of cool in front of the pretty girl. <laughs> Put it in high school terminology. <laughs> you know, because you illustrated perfectly what I was talking to her about. So, good on you for that. Thank you. Anyway, um... But here, here's the point I want to make. Um, I'll tell you a story about my confirmation into the Catholic Church. Uh, I, I grew up Roman Catholic. I was a very devout Roman Catholic until I was in my early 20s. I, I fell away from the Catholic Church at that time. And I haven't been a practicing Catholic in, in over 30 years. But... Um, I'll tell you something. When I was confirmed in 1981 in a little church in Carleton Place, Ontario, the bishop came to conduct the, the ceremony. It was the bishop that confirmed us. And for those who don't know, a confirmation for a com the confirmation ceremony for a Catholic is similar to the, um, I guess you could say, the bar mitzvah for a Jewish person. It's uh, it's when you uh, leave your childhood behind and become an adult in the faith. You see, you're now considered an adult. Once you get confirmed, you're considered to be an adult in the church. Anyway, I was 13 years old, and that's generally when they do the confirmation. And we got confirmed. Now, part of the ceremony in the old days has changed now, I guess. I only found that out a few years ago that it had changed. But part of the ceremony in the old days was that we had the line up, and each of us had to approach the bishop as our turn came in line. We lined up down the center aisle of the church, and... Um, when we got to the altar and we stood in front of the bishop, the bishop would take his right hand and give you one hell of a smash across the face. Like just turn your head around and leave a great big red palm print on your face. Just about knock you off your feet. He'd backhand you. He'd slap the shit out of you is what he'd do. Just with one slap. I mean, he didn't repeatedly hit you or anything, but... Um, this is what, and you could hear it when you were standing in line, you'd hear the smack as each person got their face smacked, you know, and you'd see their heads spin around and stuff. Everybody had a great big red palm print on their face. Now, I mean, that, that sounds kind of uncivilized, and I suppose it sort of is, but I'll tell you why, what the purpose of that was, and there was a purpose to it. And the purpose of that was this. Um, as an adult, 
in the faith, you were going to be required to endure all sorts of things throughout your life as an adult, as an adult Catholic or as an adult Christian. Um, wasn't going to be a cakewalk. There was going to be a lot required of you. And one of the things is, you know, you, you're going to have to deal with abuse at times. You're going to have to deal with people wanting to uh, to hurt you in various ways, to physically hurt you, to emotionally hurt you, to, to you know, monetarily penalize you, you know, in some cases maybe even to jail you or, or to put you to death. There are countries in the world right now where they're putting Christians to death, you see. And so the message behind that slap was, as an adult, in, your, in faith, as an adult Christian, and, and as an adult Roman Catholic in particular, you are going to face trials and tribulations. And there are times you're going to have to take that slap across the face. It doesn't have to be deserved, but it's going to come your way. And over the years, I've taken many slaps across the face. I have. Um... I'm not going to get into it all, but I have. I've, I've suffered. And I've suffered without justification a lot of the time. I won't say all the time. There are times I've suffered, and it's because I brought it upon myself. But <laughs> I'd say eight out of ten times it really wasn't deserved, and it was just it was just inflicted by people with an agenda or whatever, you know. And in, in some cases, especially in recent years... Because right now there's an atmosphere of hatred and disdain toward anyone who expresses a, a, a biblical point of view or a Christian point of view. Um, and so, in recent years, especially especially since the C-19 situation started, um, I put those melon pieces down there for the animals. I put them away from my camp. I don't want food for the animals right in the camp. So that's why I tend to put stuff like that down the path away from the camp. Anyway, um, I noticed that especially since the whole uh, C-19 situation that, uh, you know, we, we get treated badly a lot of the time and without justification and so we got to take that slap across the face you know so the message behind that slap of the face behind the fa on the face never left me i understood the message at the time i understood the value in the message and that message still has value to me even though i'm now a lapsed catholic and so I'm not taking the slap across the face for being a Catholic. I have done that in the past, even before I was confirmed. There were times that I took the slap across the face for being a Catholic. Um, but no, I didn't, I'm not taking the slap across the face for being a Catholic anymore because I'm really not a Catholic. I'm a man who was a Catholic, who grew up a Catholic. But I am taking the slap across the face for expressing a Christian point of view and for expressing a biblical point of view on various issues. Uh, transgenderism, homosexuality, um, government restrictions of our freedoms, um, scamdemics, on like that. I'm taking the slap across the face for all that. And uh, it stings. It really does. There's lots of times it really stings. But I never forgot that message that I received from Archbishop Wilhelm that day with a good hard smack to the face, you know. Um, you know, because there was a message in that. And that was a symbolic thing. That was symbolic of, um, of what we can expect to endure. Now, I'm sure that when he did that, when he, when he conducted the ceremony and he slapped each of us across the face, 
I'm sure he had no idea how bad things were going to get, uh, how, 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 how much hatred was going to be directed at people of faith. Um, I'm sure he didn't know. Uh, he may have had some idea, but I'm sure he didn't know that it was going to come as quickly as it did or that it was going to be as severe as it's been or as it will be, because it's going to get worse. I mean, if you look at the book of Revelation and, and different part, parts of the Bible, it, it talks about how much how much worse it's going to get. It talks about how they're going to cut off our heads. So it don't get much worse than that when they're wanting to cut off your head, you know. You know, you take a slap across the face, that's one thing. But imagine actually losing your head. You know, losing your life, losing your earthly life. Um, for your spiritual values, for your spiritual beliefs. And some, some are going to be called upon to do that at some point in the future. And my suspicion is that it's coming fairly soon. I may be wrong. I mean, Jesus himself said we don't know the day or the hour. But I know it's coming because Jesus told it. Jesus, Jesus told us it was, and uh, I may be dead and buried for a thousand years before it happens. I may not see it, but I have a sneaking suspicion I am going to see it. <laughs> see, this is the thing. So you got to have fortitude. You got to have courage. You know, and you got to recognize the fact that you are an adult, and you got to step up and act like an adult. You can't be a baby hiding behind your mother's skirt, you know, all the time. You can't be a baby trying to blend in with the crowd and agree to things that you don't really agree with <coughs> because you're afraid that the mob is going to persecute you because you're afraid they're going to take your job or they're going to they're going to they're going to beat you or, or or imprison you or kill you. You know, it's all part of being an adult. And uh, like I say, I took that slap across the face in 1981. And uh, that was my initiation. That was me being sent a very strong message. You're a man now. You have to wear a man's pants. You have to wear a man's boots. You have to take responsibility as a man, you know. Your days of um, hiding behind your mother's skirt or behind anything else are long gone. It's it's you now. You got to take the reins. You got to take responsibility. And I did take that seriously, and I still do. And I think it's a good message. Like I say, some may disagree with the delivery. <laughs> I'm sure that's probably why they don't do it anymore. But I'll tell you, it's a hell of a strong message. And it's a good message, whether you like the delivery method or not, it's a good message, you know. I mean, and we need to take it to heart. And whether you get your face slapped by the bishop or not, when you come of age, when you grow up, then you have to deal with serious matters seriously. You know, and... Uh, that means that you don't just follow the crowd. It means you don't just join in when the mob attacks somebody because that person is expressing thoughts or opinions that uh, are inconvenient for, for, the, for the wealthy, for the powerful, or for the mob itself. Um, it means you've got to be thoughtful. You got to use discernment. You got to be fair and just in your dealings with other people. You can agree with, you can agree or disagree with another person. There's nothing wrong with that. You 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 can participate in the conversation and say, well, I, I disagree with you. I think that you're taking a, I think you're, the stand that you're taking is wrong. And you can say why you think that. But you don't need to start ridiculing and, and carrying on like like an idiot, you know. I mean, and this is what we're getting now. And another thing the Bible says is that in the last days, people will be mockers. How much of that are we seeing? 
you know, people don't make a reasoned argument. They just mock you. They say, oh, well, you know, yeah, yeah, you're an idiot, <laughs> you know, or whatever. That, that's what they do now. They just mock you. You know, oh, anti-vaxxer, racist, whatever, you know, homophobe, whatever. I've had several conversations on Facebook with people that are advocating for children to be exposed to all sorts of transsexual things and all that. Now, I don't hate the transsexual people. I don't want to harm them or anything. I'm not out looking to, to physically injure people or to deprive people of opportunities that they need to be able to live their lives. But, you know, they don't need the opportunity to put themselves on display for children when they're all decked out in their, in their gear or whatever. And they don't need the opportunity to get children on the hormone blockers and, and to get children going under the knife, going in for surgery to, to, to change their bodily appearance to make it look like whatever gender they, they figure they identify as. You know, right now in the schools in this country, there's a push like that and to do all that and, and not even to include the parents in the decision-making process, not even to keep the parents in the loop, to, to lie to the parents and deceive them. That's not right. And uh, look, we don't let a 13-year-old drive a car. Now, I mean, I was driving cars at 13, but you know, I wasn't doing it legally, but I was doing it, and a lot of us did in those days. But, I mean, we don't let 13-year-olds legally drive cars. We don't let 13-year-olds um, buy tobacco. We don't, we don't even let 13-year-olds buy matches or a barbecue starter or anything like that. I, I bought some barbecue stall starters in the dollar store this spring. And um, the lady actually actually said, well, you're over 18, right? I said, well, yeah. I said, I was 18 in 1986. So, yes, I'm over 18. <laughs> but thank you for thinking I might not be. She said, well, I knew you weren't. I knew you weren't uh, 18 or, or under, but I have to ask that, she said. Anyway, because uh, we're not allowed to sell anything that can make fire to somebody, uh, anybody under the age of 18. So, I mean, you can't even buy a book of matches or a, a lighter or a barbecue lighter or anything in this, in this province. I don't know if it's like this right across the country, but in the province of Ontario, Canada, you got to be 18 to buy a book of matches. And yet, we're going to, we're, we're, we're advocating that uh, you should be able to get your penis hollowed out and pushed up inside your vagina, your, your, your body to make a, a makeshift vagina and go on hormone blockers so your voice will go high and you'll grow breasts. Or if you're a female, so that you go on hormone blockers so that your breasts will shrink and you'll grow chest hair and your voice will get deep. And then we'll graft on some sort of a weird artificial penis. You know, we'll close up your vagina and we'll make an artificial ball sack and balls and an artificial penis for you. And we'll put you on all these puberty blockers and hormone blockers at, at, at 13, 14, 15 years old. Somebody who can't buy a book of matches legally, you can't go into a store and buy a book of matches. But they can, you know... Per permanently alter their body, <coughs> permanently, um, you know, cause themselves to become infertile. Because once you do that, you're infertile, you know. And it, it messes with, with, with kids in a variety of ways. And so, again, these, these are adult things. These are adult decisions. And I've said this on Facebook, and I've had people brutally attack me. It wasn't not just one slap across the face from the bishop. It was just that they're pummeling me, at least figuratively. I mean, they're not literally driving their face, their fist into my head on Facebook, but they're, they're figuratively pummeling me and making all sorts of, of slanderous comments about me and making all sorts of false accusations. And, you know, accusing me of every kind of evil. Oh, you want to kill all the trans people. No, I don't want to kill any trans people. 
I don't hate trans people. I, I just don't like what I'm seeing in this movement, especially where children are concerned. Plus, look, people are dying what are on waiting lists for cancer treatments. And yet the government is funding all these surgeries and things, you know. Uh, I don't, I do not approve of that. And that's just a fact, I don't approve of it. So, anyway, bottom line is, but that doesn't mean I hate the trans people. Oh, here come the police. They know what I'm talking about. <laughs> They're coming for me. I don't know if it picked up on the microphone, but there were sirens. Anyway, we're not there yet, but we're almost there. Uh, when Bill C-63 passes, that may actually be a thing. <laughs> yet I may very well be taken away in handcuffs when that passes. But anyway, bottom line is, you know, to be an adult is a serious thing comes with a lot of responsibility. Part of the reason that I took the stand I took, even though I, I've suffered in various ways for it, is because I don't want to be part of the generation that gave it all up. I don't want to be part of the generation that gave it all away. And I don't want that to be my legacy. And look, all these rights that we have, we had to fight for them in the past. You know, and even the gay and the trans people had to fight for their rights in the past, too, because they were treated horribly not that long ago. But here's the here's the thing. Um, in the past, people had to fight for these rights. Blood was shed. Hardships were experienced. The fight has already happened. You know, those rights have already been won for the respective groups they were won for, including those like me who are just straight uh, white men, you know, who are, we're now probably the most hated group in society. But, you know, including for us, our, we have our God-given rights that, that, you know, were attempted to be taken from us for many years. And we had to fight for them. The women had to fight for their rights. Everybody had to fight for their rights. All those fights have been done. All those fights are over with now. Uh, we have our rights. Why would we just agree to give them up after all that? I mean, if you work, let's say you have a dream. You want to own a house. You want to own a property. And you work for 20, 25, 30 years and you deprive yourself of things, and you save your money, you squirrel your money away, and then the day comes when you have the resources to live your dream, to actually buy this house or this property that you want. And you do, you buy it. And that's a pretty sweet day when that happens, when you can actually do what you want to do. Now imagine, you go through all that, and then some dork comes along, a Bill Gates type character, and says, hey, you know, I, I'm a billionaire and I have all this and whatnot, but I'd really like to have your property too. And I think you should give it to me for the common good. Are you going to do it? Are you going to sign your property over to that guy? No, you're going to tell him to go screw himself. Anybody would. It'd be understandable, and he de he deserved to be told that if he came to you like that. So why is it then that people are so anxious to give up their rights? Adult people are so anxious to give up rights that they fought for, and that their their fathers and their grandfathers and their great grandfathers fought for. You know, men got their heads busted in on picket lines. People went to jail. People got murdered. People got executed. You know, at one time, to have a copy of the Bible was a death penalty offense. People were actually not, not only executed, but publicly tortured to death for having a copy of the Bible. All those rights were very hard won. They need to be taken seriously. I don't want to be part of the generation that gave them up.
I want it to be known. If we do lose them, it sure as hell is not going to be because I agreed to it. I'll tell you that. Anyway, that's it. Um, got a 30 minute long video now. I think that's long enough. <laughs> not good enough rant. Anyway, I've made my point. As an adult, you take that slap in the face and you use it as fuel for the fight. That's it. See you later.